speakers took too long. So. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get started now. Uh, thanks again for joining me. So this is Welcome to Click, Tweet, Repeat, Using Social Media to Grow a Photo Business. Uh, I'm going to speak mostly in terms of photo business, but uh, really you can generalize the, the strategies that I'm speaking about to growing a following or, or getting more attention to the photography in, in really any way. So uh, I'm going to jump right in. Um, one thing that I was thinking about on the way out was um, I do a little introduction myself, but you guys kind of already know me. Um, I, I didn't think that it was necessary to include this in my presentation, but, um, but now that our uh, distinguished congressman from New York has proven otherwise, uh, you, you have to be very careful about how you use social media and, and sort of view, view it through that same old um, truism of if, if you don't want it, if you don't want to see it on the cover of the newspaper in the morning, it's not something that you should be putting out on social media. So. Um, I won't get any more descriptive, but you, you guys know about the congressman from the um, Okay, so I'm, I'm Andrew. We already know that I run marketing for Photo Shelter. Um, I'm an incredible big barbecue fan. Um, grew up in New Jersey, did my undergrad in Michigan, which was also part of why I was convenient for Martin and I to get in touch. Started my career in politics. Uh, didn't spend much time there. Uh, did a lot of sort of tech startup stuff, kicked around in the uh, tech marketing world. And then I went to business school uh, in New York at Columbia. And then I spent the bulk of my, my time after Columbia at American Express working in the uh, small business group, uh, handling product management for all, all the different color charge cards that American Express puts out there, from the green all the way through the black card. And, and um, I had this great opportunity. I met the people at Photo Shelter, and I wanted to do something more entrepreneurial. And, uh, and they kind of lured me out of American Express. I get to wear jeans to work every day now, and I've never, never looked back. Uh, but it's, it's really an incredible gift, because uh, like I mentioned earlier, we have, we have uh, you know, thousands and thousands of photographers of all different stripes, shapes, and sizes using Photo Shelter from wedding to nature to sports to editorial, documentary, um, commercial stuff. And, uh, and I get to see all this stuff every day. So it's really, you know, it's, it's just an incredible, um, lucky job to have. Um, but one of the things that I've gotten very involved with since I joined Photo Shelter in 2007 is, is social media. And I mentioned the guides that we put out. Uh, last year I wrote a, an ebook called Social Media for Photographers. So a lot of this, come, a lot of this knowledge comes from the research that I did and, and putting that together and, and then just our experience using social media for our own business as well and, and talking to photographers and seeing how they're having success using it to, to draw more traffic to their websites and, and generate more business. Um, you can find me on, on Twitter at the Photo Shelter and on, on Facebook as well. Um, so I, I want to do a few quick polls. Uh, raise your hand if you are currently blogging or ever have. Okay, so not a lot, or maybe, maybe less than 10% of the room. How about using Facebook? Okay, more so. Um, using Facebook uh, for, for your your department or your organization. Okay, great. Uh, what about Twitter? Not quite as much. Uh, LinkedIn? Okay. Um, how about who has done a Google search in the last 24 hours? <laughs> That's almost the whole room. Um, okay, now who is concerned that none of this is productive at all? So, so the, the bulk of this presentation is going to be about how to use social media productively. Um, so, so just the basics. Um, just actually, let me do another quick poll. Uh, should, should I go through the very basics? What is Facebook? What is Twitter? Okay. Um, so, so you can set up a, uh, a personal profile on Facebook, and you can also set up a, a what, what's called a, a fan page. Um, a fan page is what a photography business or another business would use. Um, the difference is with, with a personal profile on Facebook, uh, you link up with individual people. You say, I want to be your friend. And when you both agree to be each other's friend, uh, you can each see each other's updates in what's called your stream. So this is your stream. I'm sorry, your news stream. And, uh, and when I say something on my personal Facebook profile like, 
Uh, just went to the beach with the kids. Here's some photos of me with the kids. Anybody that I'm currently friends with on Facebook will see that in their newsfeed update. Um, so it's a really powerful tool for sharing information with your network. Um, it works a little bit differently when you create a fan page because uh, in, in that sense, you're not giving people permission to follow you or, or be friends with you, but rather they're indicating that they like you, they like your business. And so when you post your updates to, to Facebook, it will appear in their, in their news feed. Um, so again, as a, as a business, you can see how uh, building a base of people that like you or people that are following you uh, can become very powerful in terms of disseminating information. Um, look, your latest photo gallery, um, the latest event that you shot, etc. So this is one, one business, this is Lincoln Barber Photo. Lincoln Barber is a photographer in Portland, Oregon. And uh, he has not a lot of people following him, 179 people, uh, but they're people that really care about his photography business. And every couple of days, Lincoln will post some new sets of photos or achievements of his or other things that he thinks will be worthwhile for his network to know about. Uh, so this is, this is my personal news feed. So I see stuff from, you can go running around Facebook and liking just about anything. If you think about it, it's, it's a sort of a new method of self-expression in that uh, people are using this platform to broadcast to everyone in their network everything that they care about and like and are doing at all times. Uh, well, people use it for different things. but. Um, so I, I can indicate movies that I like, and music that I like, and sports teams that I like, and, uh, and products that I like. If I, if I like a particular yogurt, I could probably find it on Facebook and like it, and then they'll, their updates will show up in my news feed. Um, but also, people just use it for personal purposes. Um, so I see my friend's stuff, too. Um, then there's, there's Twitter. So Twitter uh, is, is similar in some ways, uh, but you have to think Twitter, in some ways, is more about broadcasting outwards. People elect, similar to the Facebook fan page, people elect to follow you. Um, so you're, you're not necessarily, you can go out and follow other people, but uh, you don't have any control of who's following you on Twitter. So if you think about it in a broadcast sense, um, when, you, when you post something on Twitter, um, so these are, this is a series of my recent posts. That, that post will then show up in the, uh, anybody that's following me, that'll show up in their, in their news, in their stream. Um, it's a time-based stream, so depending on when you're logging into Twitter, uh, let's say I'm, I'm following, what's your name? I'm following Bob. Um, if, I'm, if I'm on Twitter at the same time, Bob is on Twitter and Bob says that uh, he just had Cheerios for breakfast, I'll, I'll see that. Um, but if he said it earlier in the day and I'm logging on now, Chances are it's already been pushed down into my into my Twitter Twitter news feed. So this is this is what like the people that I'm following are saying at any given moment in time. Is that pretty clear? Um, so what you see are these little these little Twitter handles. Everybody has minus photo uh, This is uh, somebody with with photo, uh, and that's that's a way that you can actually communicate directly with people through Twitter. Um, you can use their handle. And if they happen to be searching for their name, or um, they, they'll be notified, they'll be able to see that somebody out there in the Twitter universe is communicating to them, if, or that they were just mentioned in a tweet. Um, so it's a way of, you can actually interact and have dialogue based on the people and the names that you're mentioning in your, in your tweets. So is social media worth your time? People ask me this all the time. Uh, and, and usually what I, I, I sort of pull out one of the, uh, the MBA uh, uh, truisms, and it's, it's really a question of opportunity costs. So uh, the time and the resources that you're putting into social media, um, what else would you be doing with that time? If it's productive for you, it's worth your time. Or if you could be doing something else with that same amount of time, like let's say doing direct mailers or email campaigns or out shooting, um, and, and that is more productive in you reaching your goals, then you should be spending your time doing that. But a lot of people have found, and you need to test um, and get kind of scientific about it, that social media can be very productive in building a following, getting more eyeballs on their work. Uh, actually, I think I, the next slide is, why, why would you want to do it? So you need to set a goal. 
Um, so if you want to build a following, let's say you're not into the, the commerce aspect, but you just want to get your work seen. It's a phenomenal tool for that. And we'll talk about ways you can do that. Uh, if you're trying to get booked, sell or license photos, it's, it, it's a powerful tool for that. Uh, we hear people are managing client relationships via Facebook and Twitter. And I'm not necessarily saying managing like you know, sending proposals back and forth, but keeping on your client's radar screen so that they know the most recent things that you're doing, the cool shoots that you're doing for other clients, or experimental stuff that you're working on for personal purposes, it's a very strong way of sharing that stuff. Um, reinforcing your brand. So Martin talked about having having that the site out, the Michigan site out there, and giving people a way to interact with the Michigan brand. Uh, very very powerful way of using social media. And then there's this concept of the online footprint. This is pretty new. So. At, at the basic senses, you know, it used to be you set up a website, people know if they want to find you on the web, they find you on your website. And now, I think the, the stat is only 25% of people come to your website through the front door. They're, they're either finding you on a search engine, or finding you on a social network, or doing, you know, doing search and finding some other way that they can interact with you on their terms. And, and so increasing that footprint, the real estate that you're using to create your presence online becomes, uh, becomes important because they want to find you and interact with you on their terms. Uh, improving your search engine ranking. So I'm going to get into this a little bit, but, uh, but ways that you can improve the, um, the, the way that you are found through Google. So now Google and, and Bing and Yahoo, they're indexing social media conversation. So, and it's, it's happening very much in real time. So if, if there is a conversation about um, Oklahoma State sports, then, and somebody's doing a search for Oklahoma State sports, and somebody's linking to your photos, there's a chance that you're gonna show up on that first page of Google search and be exactly what that person's looking for. And that's how you're gonna get more traffic coming to your website. And then inspiration and feedback. It's a phenomenal way to just connect with people. See what other photographers are doing. Um, I would encourage people here to be connected with each other. And it's a nice, nice way of staying on, on uh, keeping tabs with what the other schools are doing when we're not meeting. Um, so I want to talk about this new reality, about the fading gatekeeper role. Uh, so, so, and it's not just because people are getting laid off from newspaper positions, but the, uh, the traditional role of the gatekeeper, whether it be the editor or the creative director, Whatnot. They're, they're no longer that same barrier that they once were to disseminating content, uh, thanks to social media. So you could very easily create a, a fan base for you and your work using social media if you know the way that you can connect with people, give them the content that they're looking for, and put it out there. So content, you know, for ages they've been saying content is king. But, uh, but it's very interesting when you're thinking about this online footprint concept and search engines, I've heard the, the, uh, the quote is that every piece of content that you put on the web is like a ticket in the search engine optimization lottery. So let's say it's a photo. You put a photo out there that's well keyworded, uh, descriptive, uh, that states exactly what's happening in the photo. This is indexed by the search engines. Uh, somewhere, somewhere, someone out there is looking for exactly what you're featuring in that photo. So, um, so that one photo gives you one opportunity to get found. But what about 10,000 photos, or 40,000 photos, uh, or a blog that's updated every day? Um, so the concept of content being this very powerful tool to attract people to come to your website is, um, is something worth thinking about. But of course, when you're now the person responsible for disseminating this content, you have to start thinking like that gatekeeper and like that publisher. So, so how do you do that? Oh, this is, this is my joke. I kind of blew it already. When content is currency, photographers are rich. So you don't hear that a lot, right? Um, but what do I mean by rich? You've got this amazing asset that you're constantly producing. Um, so you have to look at the asset and think about, who cares about this? And how do I find and engage them using the tools that are provided through social media? So, so we're going to look at that. How do you do that? Um, so one thing that's awesome about social media is it helps you share more of the story. So this is the sort of pseudo-traditional, uh, the news story, 
something happening in Libya. Or is this, this is actually Egypt. Um, one photo was chosen from this photographer, Scott Nelson, to run alongside the story. Uh, but then the uh, New York Times Lens Blog did a piece on the photographer himself, and they were able to show more of the behind the scenes of how, the, how he's getting by despite the crisis in Libya. I'm oh, sorry, Egypt. Um, and then on his website, he did an even broader gallery of the images. And each, so the, uh, the Lens Blog piece linked to his website where you could view 150 photos. And then he took to Twitter. And he put it out on Twitter, and, uh, and things just exploded. And people came back and were able to see that the Lens Blog did a piece on him, and that his photo was featured in the New York Times, and that if they wanted to go explore his deep gallery of, of photos from Egypt, they could. And so, so it, it, that, should, that should just give you, you know, one, one simple sense of how you can Use social media to show more of the story, to show how the photo was taken, to show how you work and where, where you come from, what your background is. Um, all kinds of great opportunities there. But at the beginning is um, thinking like thinking like that gatekeeper. You got to understand the audience. Who are you going after? Who do you want to connect with in social media? So there's a couple couple different groups to think about. I want to highlight these top two. Let's highlight the top two. So um, tribes and influencers. So tribes, this is, this is like hordes of like-minded people that find each other on the internet and interact with each other. Um, so Facebook, for example, um, let's just take my yogurt example because I thought, thought that was goofy. Um, in some sense, I'm linked up with the hundreds of thousands of other people that love that yogurt brand. Um, but you could, you could actually think about a cause or something like a, a university sports team that people really get excited about, or even a movie or a rock band. Um, and they, they can coalesce on Facebook and on Twitter and have conversations around this particular, whatever it might be that they're crazy about. You can inject yourself into that conversation uh, and become a credible member of that conversation in that community. Uh, that's automatically a stream of, of interested people who care about what you're shooting that will come and visit your site and visit your work and listen when you have something to say. Um, and then influencers. Uh, when, when you want to start thinking about getting very efficient with your participation in social media, you want to think about influencers. So understanding who those thought leaders are in your, in your world or your industry or, or whatever the subject matter may be. And getting on their radar screen, making sure they know that the content that you're putting out there is, um, is, is available, and see what you can do to get them to share it into their network. So, um, let's see, you know, Photo Shelter, we are, we are followed by something like 14,000 people on Twitter, uh, which is great, but there's a lot more than 14,000 photographers out there that I would love to reach. Um, so I know that there's you know, big, big name photographers, uh, Chase Jarvis is a you know, pretty well-known photographer. If Chase Jarvis says, hey, look what Photo Shelter's doing, then his rapid community of, of follow, follow, photographer followers will come and check out what we're doing. So if you can find those influencers and, uh, and, and be on their radar screen and get those people to share your information, uh, it becomes a very powerful way of, of, of building your own uh, awareness. And then, of course, there's your fans. There's your potential clients, there's other photographers, there's supporters, really everyone else. And anybody that you might be connecting with out there is an opportunity to either create a client, um, get eyeballs on your work, or, um, or help spread your work. So the, uh, the interesting thing about Facebook and Twitter is that uh, it becomes very viral in that, uh, especially Twitter, there's this concept of the retweet. So I tweet something, and Somebody out there finds it so interesting that they decide to retweet it to their network. So, uh, so for, if, if my 14,000 followers are each followed by, let's say, 150, on average, 150 people each, um, whenever they decide to share something that I say, I'm reaching their network too. That's, that's the way that the stuff becomes a lot more viral. Uh, and you can use that to your advantage. Uh, so here, here's a good example of how you, how you find the conversation. So this is a Twitter. 
I remember not long ago, uh, the guys from Wisconsin's here, right? Uh, the, the, uh, the, the trouble with the governor and, and the unions in, in, in the state house in, in Wisconsin. Uh, so this photographer was there, uh, shot the protest, put it up on his, this is in his photo shelter gallery, and then he tweeted it. Uh, so he tweeted a link to the gallery. And then you'll see over here, this is something called a hashtag. Here, that's a hashtag. So it's an indicator that people use uh, almost, and it's a way of tagging your, your post so that it gets captured by other people, captured and viewed by other people who are following this conversation. So the hashtag here is WI Union and Wisconsin. And you see on Twitter there are these topics that trend. Um, so if you, if you just want to use Twitter to understand what's, what people are talking about, what people are buzzing about, you can actually look at the trending topics and you'll see these, these very topical hashtags popping up. But people who care about what's going on in Wisconsin are following those hashtags. So his photos get injected into that conversation. And suddenly, a whole host of people that didn't know about this photographer, didn't know about his work, now have a link and can get to his work and be aware of, of his photography. Um, and, then, and then there's just the basic search. So you could. Um, you could do searches for Michigan football and see who's communicating about Michigan football, understand who the influencers are in that conversation, and connect with them and say, hey, at, you know, using the at sign, at M football fan, check out this new gallery of photos from the Rose Bowl, hopefully. Um, and then there's, there's the trending topic. So if you, can, you can jump in and become a part of the conversation. Um, similarly, on Facebook, you can, you can actually use the search tools inside of Facebook to find these affinity groups. So this, I, I just picked, I did search on the term Haiti. So let's say you have photos of Haiti. You can find charity groups and support groups that care about what's going on in Haiti, get into their conversation, and share your work with them. You should all be thinking about ways that this can be applied to your, your specific work that you're doing. Um, okay, then there's this concept of the endorsement economy. And this goes back to the influencer thing. Um, everybody getting used to seeing this like button in many places? Um, so you can, the, the Facebook like button has now left Facebook and it can now be embedded on any website anywhere. Um, and people can indicate that they like it. So on any piece of content you put out there, a photo, a blog post, a company website, even, you can put this like button. And people who are passing through might just give you a little little, little like. They want to let you know, yeah, I support you, I like what you're doing. Um, or I love this photo. And, um, and what, what happens is that that like, they indicated that they liked it, it'll show up in their Facebook feed. Um, so their friends now see that they love this photo on the Notre Dame website. And then Ideally, when those friends see that, maybe they're also like-minded friends, they will travel from that link that's shared on Facebook to the Notre Dame website, and maybe they'll buy some photos. Um, so so it's, it's almost goofy, but um, from a marketing perspective, you have to start thinking, like, how, how can I generate more likes? What is the type of content that is going to generate more likes? The more likes that I get, the more traffic I'm going to get through this the Facebook platform. Uh, similarly, on, on Twitter, it's the same kind of idea. When, when people share your content, effectively, they're endorsing you. They're saying, you can borrow a little bit of my brand love that you know, people, this is a, Katrina is a, um, she's a um, FIT um, professor. She's written a bunch of books on, on um, photo, Photoshop. And um, so when she shares something, like somebody's work, uh, all, all kinds of new eyeballs go, go on the work. And, and so it's great. She's, the, the, she's endorsing this content. Um, so, so here's a tip. Um, it's a great tool for sharing your, your new news. And it's a great tool for getting your, the word out there about stuff. But you also have to be careful not to be that loud mouth guy in the corner of the room that's talking about himself all the time. Um, Nobody likes that guy, right? So, 
So you want to be on there, you want to be listening, you want to be contributing to conversations, you want to be sharing other interesting stuff that is happening in your world that people can relate to. Um, basically adding value. You want to add value to that conversation so that when it does come time to do the self-promotional stuff, it's you're, you're seen with credibility, not you, you haven't exhausted people with your constant banter about yourself. Um, so a general rule of thumb, although I, I can say I'm the first one to violate this, is 10% of the time you should be talking about yourself, 90% of the time you can be you can be promoting others and helping others. It probably is a little bit different in, in your world because um, putting your content out there is adding value to the conversation. Um, here's, here's another another concept of, you want to make it as simple as possible for people to actually share this content. So, so if they can't find a link to your photos, they can't share a link to your photos. But a lot of what people are doing now is they're adding these buttons, social, social sharing buttons to their websites, so that it becomes very easy to share directly on, on the social networks. Um, so, so I'd encourage you to do that. Um, I will put in a plug for Photo Shelter. You can do it automatically with, with us. Um, but it, it's very easy. There's, you, can search this, you can do a, it's called a plug-in or a widget that can help you with adding this to your website if, you, uh, if you'd like. Um, and then the blog. So, so I mentioned earlier, and I'm not going to belabor the point, but the more content that you put out there, the more ways you're creating for people to engage with you. Um, so using the blog as another social vehicle is well worth your while. Um, let's say a new gallery of images goes up in your, in your photo archive or your storefront. You can blog about it and link to that, to that content. Um, I won't go too deep here because I know I'm running a little bit long on time. But if anybody wants to talk about blogging this evening, I'll, I can. we also wrote a book on blogging, so we can talk about that. Um, but some ground rules. So you want to set time restrictions. This stuff, you can get sucked in really, really easily and feel productive. You can, you can say, well, I, I, I communicated with all kinds of people today. But if you're not keeping your goal in mind and you're not, you're not doing it to, to sort of an end, with, an, with an end in mind, um, you can feel productive and you can waste a ton of time. Um, there's five C's, so contribute to the conversation, think in terms of community, um, comment in. So don't just put your stuff out there, comment on other people's stuff. Um, and you want to think about ways that you can encourage commenting on your stuff. So ask questions, um, contribute, uh, collaboration, and, and make a contribution. Those are all things self, self explanatory. Um, quality over quantity. So if you're just blasting and blasting and blasting, people stop listening really quickly. Um, talk about listening. Um, make your brand a deliberate decision. So, um, so this is very true for a university photo department. Um, if, if, uh, if you're not representing the university's brand, you're, you could be, you could get, find yourself in some trouble. So the things that you say, uh, you have to understand the audience, make sure it jives with the way that the university likes to speak about itself. Um, the same goes for me and the way that I tweet on behalf of the company. Uh, you have to be careful. You don't want to engage in, a, in any, any kind of arguments with people. And you know, there will be those curmudgeons out there that say things, and you kind of just let it, let it go, let it roll off, and, or you know, try, try to figure out a way to be diplomatic about it. Uh, but show your soul. You know, have a personality. Um, if uh, people know that they're interacting with another person, it's, uh, it's, it's almost more of a rewarding experience for them. And set those goals and measure. So, so that's one way you figure out if the time is worth it. So say, you know, I want, I want to generate 15 new print sales from my Twitter activity this month. Then set a time, and at the end of that time, you can say, I generated 15 print sales. Or I didn't, and this was a failure, and I'm not going to waste time on it anymore. Um, so one way to measure, I mentioned Google Analytics earlier. Um, we have a book on Google Analytics too. It's free. Um, you, you can install Google Analytics and look at how many people are coming to your website from Facebook and from Twitter and what are they doing when they get there. Um, so you can then understand, is this a, is this a productive tool for me? Uh, Facebook, if you have a Facebook fan page, there's an insights area where you can understand how people are interacting with your content. This becomes really valuable if you think about it. Uh, if you're posting different sports photos, uh, you can actually get data on which sports resonate most with the people who are following you on Facebook. 
um, or whatever the subject matter may be. And then you can fine tune your efforts to share more of those types of photos. Uh, so other things that you can measure and tweak, the traffic coming to your website, the actual conversation that's happening. Um, so basically using search to understand if people are buzzing about the content that you've shared, uh, the level of participation and engagement. There's a lot of tools out there that will help you do this. Uh, leads, so if you actually, Martin mentioned that he has a, a newsletter sign up on the website. So this is effectively a lead that he can market to in the future. Um, the number, you could set that as a goal. I want to use Facebook to generate more leads, people who are signing up for my newsletter. And that, that lead is so powerful because I can communicate with these people in the future and let them know when I have special holiday offers and whatnot. Obviously sales and profits, recurring business, and improvements in your search engine results. Wow. Then another thing to think about, and I'm not going to go into a deep case study, but having a social media workflow. Um, so Martin mentioned that he does, uh, he gets the gallery up on the photo store, and then he will put it out on Facebook, and then he will tweet it. Uh, these photographers, uh, Luceo Images is a, um, is a collective of photographers, and what they will do is they'll do a, um, they'll do a blog post, and, and, I'm sorry, they'll put up a gallery of images, and then they'll do a blog post about how they shot those images. And then they'll put that blog post out on Facebook and Twitter so that the people who are following them can see that behind the scenes, the, you know, the really interesting and more sort of um, juicy, I guess, the, the, you know, the, the content, the sort of more in-depth content from the blog post. And then more people will share their content via Facebook and Twitter in, in return. So it becomes, it's like a little bit of an ecosystem if you think about it. Getting it up on the website, then blogging about it, get some attention to the stuff on the website. Then you put out on Twitter and Facebook the stuff that you have on the blog, and everybody's kind of making this journey with you that you shared with them. Uh, because they care. They wouldn't be following you if they didn't care. Uh, just another case study I'm going to kind of go through quickly. It's also the same idea of tying the blog and the Facebook and the Twitter together with the website. Uh, so some cool tools that you would use. So you may have noticed that Twitter only lets you share 140 characters at a time. So there's a tool called Bitly, which will actually take that long URL and shorten it to just a handful of characters. And that way you have more flexibility in what you want to say when you post things on Twitter. Uh, the cool thing about Bitly is that you can create an account and it'll tell you how many people clicked on that link. So, um, so it's a way of gauging how, um, how well the stuff that you're putting out there is, is uh, resonating. Cloud's a pretty cool tool, K-L-O-U-T. Um, this is a, uh, it's, an, it's an influence measurement. So they've created some kind of algorithm based on how people interact with you on Twitter. And, and they'll tell you, you know, here's how many followers you have, but here's your real reach, and here's how you compare to other people in your network. And you can actually use it to find the influencers that I was talking about. The Twitter Grader. So these really smart guys in the, uh, in the Boston area, a company called HubSpot. They do a lot of internet marketing, uh, consulting, and, and uh, they have a, a tool. But they put out this free tool called the Twitter Grader, and it will tell you how good of a job you're doing in, in generating interest on Twitter. TweetDeck is a tool that I use. You can actually put it on your phone or on your desktop, and you can create multiple streams based on search terms to understand the buzz that's happening around a specific topic. So you can always see the buzz for your school name, or, or a particular sport, or theatrical performance, or an event that you're hosting. Um, or you can even do you know, sports figures that you follow and whatnot. You can really set it up to search any term that people are talking about. And you can see what all the smart and not so smart people are discussing on Twitter. Uh, so I just want to hammer, open, hammer home that point about the front door concept. Um, you want to go where your customers are. Um, and we work really hard on creating these awesome websites. But it's not likely that somebody's going to come to your website every day. Um, but Twitter and Facebook have become so pervasive that people literally go there every day, multiple times a day. So if you're putting content out into their world, you have a much, much better chance of attracting them into your website and either transacting there or whatever your goal is, whatever you want them to do at your website, 
Maybe it's just view your work and engage with your content. Uh, but it's much less likely that they're going to say, hmm, I'm going to go to that website today. Versus they need to be hit by something. So having new news to share with them and thinking strategically about what you can be putting out into the social networks uh, that's going to resonate with your community is, uh, is the lesson I, I want to leave you with. Um, so think about how relevant you can make it. So who is that audience and what is relevant to them? Uh, find those influencers and then you have to commit to a frequency. So uh, some level of consistency, otherwise you're going to disappear. People will forget about you, um, at least in the social world. And that creates opportunity for photographers. Uh, I think it's obviously, you know, things are changing, they're changing really fast, and uh, there's doom and gloom in certain parts of the industry, but I really do think that social media creates a fantastic opportunity to build a fan base, attract people to your work, and if, if your interest is there, profit from it. Any questions? There's, uh, some more resources, but uh, you can really find all of these if you just go to the publisher's website. Questions?